just off and running and we are in the 3rd of June and I've turned the heat pump on here because it's cold. In the house. How cold did it get last night? It got down to about uh, eight degrees here last night. So this, it's is, just, this is so bizarre. A week ago, it was what, 42? It was, yeah, the something ridiculous. Index? And uh, yeah, so we're, uh, so we're walking around. I was wandering around naked. Were you? Yeah. The police. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Brinston needs ironing, doesn't he? <laughs> don't, don't lie. He's, he's harmless. He's yeah, harmless. Get, <laughs> get the ironing board out. Oh, go, oh no, no. <laughs> I thought Walter Brennan was dead. <laughs> oh my. It's been, yeah, 2020 is, um, it, you, you'll open, you'll open the Encyclopedia Britannica and it won't be there. It'll be 2019 and then 2021. It'll just be gone. Yeah, but if you look up shit, yeah, there oh, it is. Man, what a what a time! And speaking of shit, and this is a rude way of saying this, but I was listening to a spokesperson for Canada Post this morning with Palatka, and yeah. uh, wow, the definition of a train wreck. I don't know where they found this man. I I don't want to insult him personally, but he should not be doing what he's doing. He's been with Canada Post apparently for several years. I won't mention his name. I will post the interview. Stop and I'll say, and you'll hear Arka. And, and you've, you've conducted countless interviews and you've spoken with all kinds of spokespersons over, over your career, some of whom know how to do the job, some of whom do not Haven't know how to do the job. Yeah. And you can hear it within a few seconds yeah. of the beginning of the interview. And you'll hear it in Arka's voice. Uh, an aggressive questioning turns to ridicule, turns to pity near the end and you can hear oh. the guy babbling off yeah, yeah. into the distance as if you know he's 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 treading water in the shallow end there and people are, are, are throwing hot dogs at him at one point just to get him to <laughs> shut up you know what i had a pretty bad rad pool party oh man and he's got he's got maybe three pat phrases that he's it, not not even that not even that and i i felt i felt bad for him too and i felt bad for canada post they're just overwhelmed they're beyond themselves they can't keep up and uh and it's it's that's uh, anyway you'll have to listen to it I, that's what's been stuck maybe in they my should craw. have talked to somebody from the union you're the one who has told me that they're they, getting they're getting stuff done that yeah. they're the ones who are getting the guys delivering yes. the, the, and, yep. and they've been speaking and they've been much more clear and actually rather even handed about the whole thing and, and explaining things and the unions uh, the union are the folks who have brought in the cameras and the reporters to show them what the hell's going on so the people can understand. But this babbling brook of, of, of bromides here was just, anyway, <laughs> I, will, uh, I will try to put this aside, but it's, it's interesting that we're speaking with, such, with someone in a moment here, Stefan Garno, who's, who's uh, all about the media. Let's All try right. to get out of here alive, boys. Let's try to get out of here alive after regrouping. Stefan Garneau is with us. Good morning, Stefan. Thank you for joining us. You bet. My pleasure. We just showed a copy of, uh, or, the, or the cover of the book, Survive au 21 e siècle, Rester humain à l'ère numérique, so surviving the 21st century, remaining human or staying human in the digital age. It's now, really you, hard. Uh, okay, but that... <laughs> yeah, c'est dur. I mean, my God, talk about timely for this book. Uh, you, yeah, but that was that was released a year ago, was it not, yeah, Stefan? It, so, it was. So you've got work to do, buddy. I know. I have to start over. I have to. I have to. You know, part two is coming. <laughs> part two, the catastrophe. It's. Uh, yeah. Well, let's, let me just line up a little bit more. I mean, Stefan is a broadcaster. He's a writer. He, he contributes to Samedi et Rien d'autre and the Moteur de Recherche, Les Grands, en, les grands Entretiens. Yeah. Um, and uh, the book has been a uh, subject of some discussion. Technologies of mass distraction, of course, is the key phrase that, that, yeah. I, that I like. And, uh, and again, coming back to the situation we're in now, I heard you on with Joël Le Bigot a while back talking about zoom fatigue for for one thing 
Yeah, and we're on Zoom right now. Yeah, and they, they, and we're Dave fatigued. looks a little fatigued. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just had my hair done. Yeah, you're kind of pale. Yeah. Stop um, touching your hair. Stop touching your nose and stop touching your hair. Uh, uh, yeah, Zoom fatigue. Um, well, it's uh, listen, how, how many times did we have to do it over to start this conversation this morning? Yep. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that this is not, this is fine for the purpose of what we're doing right now. We're having a conversation. I mean, we're basically uh, being like um, uh, uh, broadcasters from home with this, this, I mean, it's not broadcast quality, but we can broadcast all over the world with this conversation we're having. So we're, we're doing that. But uh, Zoom, in terms of how we're using it for Zoom cocktails, for example, or for Zoom meetings, it's not the real world. Technically, there are many problems. You, you, first of all, we can't look at each other in the eye. Straight in the eye, it can't happen. Because I'd have to look at the camera, and while, while I'm looking straight to the camera, I can't look at you. So it, for you, it feels like I'm, I'm watching you uh, in the eyes, but for, uh, not for me. So it's not real communication. And you can't see the facial expressions properly around the eyes, around the mouth. Uh, also, there are all sorts of communication codes that cannot be uh, reproduced in a Zoom meeting. Now, you were saying in the, bo in, in the book uh, a year ago that uh, this is harming the way we, we, we interact under normal circumstances. So under these circumstances, it must be deleterious to the point where do you think we will ever be able to recover the way we're, we're going now? Well, that's a good question. When, when will the... Um... I wrote an uh, op-ed for Le Devoir on that subject. On that, I mean, all questions are up right now. Well, once the dust settles, mm -hmm. when when we get out of this um, uh, c confinement situation, when will that be? I'm not sure. But we, we, I mean, we're already addicted to these technologies right. in in one way or another. We're all addicted to these technologies, some more than others. So. Is this period we're going through right now when where we're using them so, so much? I mean, we've been working from home. We've been meeting with friends from home through these technologies. So, I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's exacerbating our addictions to these things. So we'll, but on the other hand, once we're finished with this thing or on to another phase, where social distancing is not as much of a, uh, a factor, will we be have been so frustrated for not having all these human contacts that we'll, we'll feel a strong desire for it? We'll see. We'll see how it turns That's out. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. How's it, but, how's it affecting your day, personally, on a personal level? Well, Dave, I'm a very solitary man to start with, so it's not changing a thing. No, I, well, I exaggerate. I, I, I mean, this is a joke, but not that much. I, I do. Um, I'm fine. I don't need that many people in my day. Uh, but I miss, I miss going to work. I miss getting up in the morning, taking a shower, having a coffee, getting a little of an adre adrenaline rush and leaving the house. So what I do now in the morning is I do all these things. I walk out of the house. I have a, like a 20 minute walk around the park. I come back home and I start my day. So I'm sort of reproducing the uh, morning ritual, but it, uh, at the end of the day, I'm still at home and I've, I haven't had uh, real interactions with people, a few phone calls, maybe a few uh, Zoom meetings, but, but it's, not, it's not very satisfying. So no, it's, it's far from perfect. Okay, I, I was afraid you, you were announcing that you'd stop showering, but we're, we're fine, we're good. Well, um, no, I, I shower less, but I still shower. Okay. Yeah, well, thank God we don't have smellorama. It's, it's coming, Dave. <laughs> now, Stefan, you wrote the preface to another book. I don't have the title handy right now. And you outlined your, your background as a this young Quebecois kid watching American television. Yeah. Because we were talking about, uh, Dave and I were talking about the Beverly Hillbillies for some yeah. reason that I became re-addicted to in recent weeks. And uh, <laughs> That is just, frightening. That's, that is that's weird, scary. isn't it? Yeah. 
It is sort of weird, yeah. Watching Mr. Drysdale yeah. walk into the uh, to the mansion, and um, <laughs> but I, I was intrigued by the intrigued in a way, yes, because I went through the same situation. But I was living in Toronto at the time, watching uh, TV coming in from Buffalo in the early days of cable. But I was I was interested to hear from a young Quebecois kid who was watching American TV. And you were weaned on American TV, right? I, wa I watched a lot of American TV. Actually, I, 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 I think I learned to speak English through American TV. I don't remember not being able to speak English. And, um, well, my, my father uh, traveled the world. He was opened to a lot of things. That's right, he your liked... father, Richard Garneau, a sportscaster, well-known. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and and he was a uh, a fan of uh, film, of musicals, and uh, so we we had access when I was a, a kid to CBS, NBC, ABC, the major American broadcasters. So really early in my life, I started to watch sitcoms and I started to watch tele uh, American television. So, uh, I mean, you've been watching the Beverly Hillbillies for the last couple of weeks. I've been watching, I'm, I'm in my fourth season of Cheers. So oh, okay. we all have our, got them all back. we all have our own little uh, Gato Vachon. Uh, little exactly. I, I call it comfort TV. Yeah. It's uh, in these difficult times. So, and, um, so I let it be known that I was interested in American television. And uh, at one point, the, because the book you're referring to is called Télé en série. And it, it, it was a, um, uh, come on, the, a compendium, compendium, a uh, resume yeah. of yeah. a, a two-day conference that took place at the University of Montreal, I think in 2016 or 14, I forget. And uh, they, they, knowing that the, no, actually I, I reached them when I uh, understood that they were having this two-day conference because I couldn't believe a, a famous university was having a two-day conference on television. I mean, 20 years ago, that would have been impossible. Mm. Academics were sneezing, were, were lifting their nose at, we called it the boob tube. Uh, and, um, and so I reached out to them. I said, listen, I'm very much interested. Uh, if you need a host or a moderator for some of your um, uh, activities, I'll do it. And they hired me and I did it. And then a couple of months later, they wanted to, uh, to uh, use all their communications to put them in a book from all these different people from all over the world and they asked me to, to, to write the preface for it. So that's why you have the, you read the preface for that. I did. And, and, and I, I focused. Rhyming off all the American networks and all the shows I used to watch too. And I thought, wow, my goodness, uh, it, it is, it is a powerful medium. Yeah, yeah. And being, being a Francophone doesn't change a thing. I mean, I, was, I, I, I grew up in North America. I grew up in, a, in, in the Snowden neighborhood of Montreal, which was mm. half bilingual. Um, so it came naturally to me. As I said, I can't remember not be a, a, being able to understand or speak English. So. Yeah, I remember learning English from watching the Red Skelton show and Ed Sullivan oh and Bonanza and things yeah, like that. Yeah, well, you're yeah. much, much I'm older much, than I much am. older than you are. <laughs> So thank you very much, uh, Stefan. Thanks for joining yep. us. Where's the night? Drive safe. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Stefan, what now at this conference at uh, UDM? I mean, did it did it talk about television in general, or did it inevitably talk about American television? No, no, it was television from all over the world. Okay. There were speakers from North Africa, from Belgium, for uh, well, mostly francophone countries. And, and also some uh, academics which were interested in American television, considering the, 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 the space that American television takes all over the world. Uh, much, much less now because of, because of Netflix, because of the, all these platforms, which gives us access to German television or Scandinavian television or Spanish television. Right. And there are some very good shows uh, being produced uh, all over the world. And, and, you know, we're a little sick and tired of the American formula. It's always the same. Yeah. Well, it's not always the same thing. They make very good television. But we've seen a lot of it. So, so if I see a German show, there's a German show called Berlin, ba Babylon Berlin, which is wonderful yeah. on Netflix. There's La Casa de Papel, the Spanish show, which is a, a money heist in English, which is also very popular. So, and, and uh, 
yeah, it's it's an interesting great turn. Show from, you're right from Scandinavia, and uh, that wonderful show about the, the the woman prime minister of Denmark is just yeah. Uh, is that Borgen? Bor Bor yeah. Bor Borgen? Yeah, that's Borgen. very good. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and also the uh, since we're chatting television, we could be be here all day. Yeah. But the 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 Brits, the Brits. I mean, I've seen very good television from Scandinavia, from Spain, from Germany, as I've just said. But the British, man, the English actors, so good, are yeah. are superb. Yeah, they are. Oh, masters. They're, 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 they are masters. Oh, they really are. They've been consistently good. I mean, the bar is very high with British television. Yeah. Stefan, and, and it's uh, interesting you mentioned that because, in contrast to the American one that we've all talked about you really know things are going to kind of work out on American television. It doesn't happen in British television. There's always a really frightening surprise. Yeah, exactly. Which is sort of refreshing in a way, because I, I like to be surprised. I like to not know how it's going to end before, before it does. Yeah. Stefan, thank you. Our time is up, mon ami. All right. Merci well, beaucoup. Just before you go, how are you enjoying Cheers? Oh, uh, it has aged really well. It's very good. It's very, very funny. I mean, Shelley Long is a later, latter day uh, Mary Tyler Moore, and and she's very physically funny. And and uh, and Ted Danson is also very good. He's sort of a. I mean, he's been around for 30, 40 years in American television, and he's been consistently very funny, very good. So I, yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, he's a good comedic actor. You think he's just sort of a Ken doll, and then you realize the guy's got chops. He oh, he really does. Do he yeah. really does. That's yeah. going to be stuck in my craw now, too. All right. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> All right. Glad we got it underway, <laughs> Stefan. We'll talk now, to see, you soon. <laughs> I look forward to the post-pandemic thesis on the digital age, mon ami. It'll happen. All right. <laughs> At merci. Bientôt, Salut. Bye, bye. Bye. Merci. Bye. Bye. Stefan Garneau. Great stuff. Uh, you and I yeah, have known him for... was a real renaissance man. Yeah, yeah, Richard, Richard was quite the guy. You and I have known Stefan for a long time, uh, back at CBC, that's what kind of that oh, yeah. days. And uh, so, uh, uh, and something to look forward to. All right. Um, Are you happy uh, now? Are you feeling No, because your happier? microphone's breaking up again. God damn it. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. So that's going to be part of my project for today, is try mm -hmm. to figure that out. Okay. And well, I'm, I'm, I'm you. glad we got uh, we got a hold of Stefan finally and worked that out. It's just you. Maybe we'll just uh, we'll get uh, we'll get one of those, uh, you know, photo not available, and we'll just have you uh, <laughs> type stuff. <laughs> Hello. And don't let me talk. Hello. So it'll be Hello? perfect. Hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and get one of those screens behind. I'd like to put a background up. Would you? Okay. Yeah. Um, Something. Tomorrow, exotic. Susan Pinker is going to be with yeah, us. Well, that should uh, be interesting. This should be, it kind of follows on the heels. It of does what, uh, follow what we've discussed today. And, uh, and I will do my darndest to get this thing figured out with the microphone because I simply am I'm stymied. But we'll see what we can do. Okay. okay. Take care. Bye.